Hello, and welcome to another episode of Death by Bungie. The quest for the successor to Bungie continues once again. I am looking at Darton Archery. That's what we're going to look at on this episode of Death by Bungie. Darton Archery. I know almost nothing about Darton Archery, and I am ready to click on this link for the first time. I have not looked at their webpage. I'm not familiar with them. My only exposure to Darden Archery, aside from a request from one or two friends of Bungie to look at these crossbows, is that I think these are the crossbows that Keith Warren shoots a black bear, a really nice broadside shot on a black bear over bait up in Canada, which is my dream hunt, you know, in a lot of ways. He shot that black bear, got a complete pass through with his crossbow, and he even punctured the steel barrel with what appeared to be just a regular arrow, nothing fancy about the broadhead, all that. So I was like, wow, this is pretty powerful, interesting equipment. So I went and looked it up, and I think that was the only exposure that I had to Darton Archery, to Darton's crossbows. So we're going to look at them today for the first time. Again, these are something that were on the list. I went through and made a list of crossbow manufacturers that I want to at least explore on the phone, on the internet, before I go to local shops and try out a few. Until I try them out, you just can't know for sure which one suits you best. And frankly, that it might not even be enough. You get a crossbow, I grew to love my crossbow. I grew to love Bungie over seasons season after season, hunting with that crossbow, shooting it in the backyard, preparing to hunt with that crossbow. All the time that I spent with that crossbow allowed me to know and understand and appreciate that crossbow on an intimate level. And until you do that, you really can't fully understand a crossbow. I'm not going to get that just off the internet, right? It takes a little bit of exposure to them to do it. So let's click on this Dart and Archery, however. Let's go on the old phone here and see where we're at with their website. And Dart and Archery, the first thing we see right at the top here, Black Eagle Arrows and Conquest Archery. Man, my eyes are getting old here. I can hardly read the little fine print here. These two folks are excited to announce the acquisition of Darton Archery. Darton Archery. They have bought Darton Archery. Well, that's interesting. Actually, I just heard in a podcast I was listening to just yesterday or the day before, a podcast where they talked about this acquisition. They talked about this, the fact that Black Eagle, or a company that owns Black Eagle, had purchased Darton Archery. And they were very excited about that on that podcast, talking about how that would be a good thing for Darton because they've been taken over, so to speak, by a company that really respects archery equipment. Black Eagle is a big name, right? If you're hunting with Black Eagle arrows, you're doing pretty good. You can do a lot worse, let's put it that way. I switched with Excalibur from the fire bolts that we were using before from Eastern Archery to the Black Eagle based Pro Flight arrows, love those things to death. Very good stuff. And I know a lot of other people have had similar experiences. Black Eagle, big name, hopefully means good things for dart and archery. On this webpage here, are you ready to view the future of archery design about us, the history of Darton? I can stand to learn a little bit about the history of Ar Darton archery. We haven't uh, looked at them before. I don't know anything about them, so I'm going to read a little bit more, and we will at least scan what the history of Darton provides. Darton is one of the few archery companies today that can say they have been in the archery business for over 70 years. Okay, so they've been around. A very humble beginning in 1950, in a simpler time, oh yeah, a simpler time in archery because you didn't have the options for crossbows, you didn't have the options for compound bows, you had stick and string, and that was about it. You had long bows and recurve bows, right? And here they go on to talk about that with the introduction of the compound bow. Darton Archery and Rex Darlington became one of the few companies to produce the new bow, a bow with wheels on each end, which would become the blueprint for modern compound bows used today. Interesting. Today, Darton has become the world's leader in archery technology and innovation. 
and manufacturer of compound bows. Darton is still a humble, family-owned company with one motivation. Well, if they just got purchased by the company that owns Black Eagle, I don't think it's a family-owned company so much. Maybe that needs to be updated a little bit. They are pushing the limits of engineering to produce the best performing archery equipment. And based on the very extremely limited experience I have with Darton Archery, I was impressed with that video from Keith Warren. So you can do a lot worse than that, I suppose. They've won some Target stuff here. We do a lot of that stuff. Now, a few words from the president, head engineer, Rex Darlington. And here is Rex and Barbara Darlington in a 1998 safari to Africa. That is pretty neat. That's a neat thing. It is good to see a company that, for me, for me, and the world takes all kinds, right? But it is important to me to see a company that's looking at and focusing on hunting as their motivation for crossbows and crossbow development, or archery development in this case. So that's interesting. All right, so we've got the history of Dart and Archery. We go to the drop down store products, dealer locator, about us community. The dealer locator, that's kind of a thing when I'm looking at crossbows, and maybe this is something that would be important to you as well. I think it's important to take into account what's if something goes wrong with my crossbow, what am I gonna do? Where am I gonna take that thing? It's great if I can do all the work myself, but if I can't, if I have to go to a shop, what shop is qualified to work on the brand that I purchase? So to me, I am looking for brands, and I haven't gotten this deep into it yet, but I probably will go with a brand that has at least a dealer in my county, okay, within 20 minutes, maybe 30 minute drive, it's pretty average for the shops here. They're about 20 minutes or 30 minutes from me within that distance that will have my crossbow in stock, my parts in stock, and a tech who is at least somewhat knowledgeable of that brand. That's going to be important to me. Not looking at that stuff yet, but I'm throwing that out there that down the road, my choices of ones to try might be limited somewhat by that. I would look to see if they are available locally. We've looked at the Darton history. Now we're on Darton products. This is the modern Darton, right? What are our products for 2020? Competition Pro Series bows, compound bows, action series. We've got something called a demon. Okay, that's interesting. We've got fishing stuff called the splash. That's a good name for a fishing weapon, I suppose. Crossbows, the Toxin 150, the Toxin 135, the Toxin 125 SS, and the Toxin 100 SS. Um, I hope we're not looking at 150 feet per second, 135 feet per second, a 125 and a 100 feet per second crossbow. I suspect we're not, but that's interesting. Most of the time, we've got the word toxin. Why don't we say 350, the 350, the toxin 350, which would suggest to me that it's capable of shooting pretty consistently at 350 feet per second with a certain arrow to be specified by the manufacturer. Interesting that they're doing it this way. Now, if I can click on any one of these, I don't know one from the other. I'm going to go with Toxin 150. I don't know what that means, but oh, that's a newer one because it says picture coming soon, but there is a picture. Newly designed Toxin 150 compact performance. Okay, the newly designed Toxin 150 will absolutely blow you away. It is mind-blowing how such a short, well-balanced crossbow can shoot 425 feet per second and be so quiet. Okay, 425 feet per second. I'm impressed by that. I'm interested in that. That's in the range of what I am looking for and what I am liking as far as the new crossbows are concerned. And it can be so quiet. The Toxin 150 utilizes Darton's popular Toxin compact tactical stock and new designed high, en high energy limb system for performance and maneuverability in any hunting situation. When I was asked recently why I'm upgrading Bungie. And I get that. I'm going to do a video specifically talking about that, which will tell not only why I'm looking to upgrade, but some considerations why you might consider upgrading. I'm not suggesting anybody needs to upgrade, and I'm not suggesting that at all. But I do want to answer that question, at least as far as why I'm looking to upgrade. The crossbow that has been so dependable and reliable and I've been so successful with in the woods. Why would you seek to change that? When we talk about 
maneuverability in any hunting situation. That's a big reason. That's a big part of that discussion. If you go back and watch a video that I did last fall hunting with my daughter in Maryland, you will see me shooting her crossbow, Bungie Jr., considerably small compared to Bungie. And the success that I had with that crossbow really cemented it for me. I was thinking about upgrading long before that, but that really was a turning point for me, seeing the maneuverability of a smaller crossbow. Bungie's a big guy, right? Bungie is a big crossbow. If you're looking for a lightweight, blazing fast, and, all right, so now we have a new kind of fast. We've seen different kinds of accuracy. Remember, we've had hyper accuracy and extreme accuracy and things like that. Now we have regular fast, which is most crossbows, and then blazing fast in capital letters. Now you're speaking my language. You know, the features on this bad boy, high energy cam system, patented trackless aluminum barrel design. Now we're talking about an aluminum barrel here. I don't think we're talking about a barrel in the nature of the Killer Instinct crossbow line. I don't think that's what we're talking about. I think we are speaking more generically about a crossbow barrel that happens to be made out of aluminum. So the rail and the barrel are probably made out of aluminum. That's what we're talking about. Here we don't have a rail probably because it is a trackless design. So we will look at that closely. Rifle style rotating safety, three pound trigger pull, patented barrel dampener, limb dampener. We're gonna have to look at the pictures in order to understand what a lot of this stuff is. Oversize foot stirrup, sling studs, rope cocker included dual string suppressors, patented bullpup stock design. This bullpup stock design is something that's becoming popular. I've seen it in a couple of recent ones as we seek to get these things even smaller, these crossbows even shorter. Bowstring length, power cable length, all that good stuff. The speed, 400 grain at 425. Now this I really like. I appreciate this Darton Archery. Thank you very much, whoever wrote this, and put speed, 400 grain, 425. You're telling me right off the bat what I need to know. 400 grains will go 425 feet per second. That's pretty cool. I have that information right there, right there at my fingertips. I don't have to go searching through your website and guessing. I do like this, where you've got it sort of laid out for you. Hopefully this is accurate, but, and I assume it is. For the purposes of today's video, this is accurate, right? Power stroke, 16 inches, nice long power stroke. That's how they're getting that nice speed, I'm betting. Draw weight, 185 pounds. That's doable. Bungie, incidentally, is 175 pounds. I have been cocking a recurve crossbow with no let off at 175 pounds for 11 years now and doing that with a rope cocker. Here, the draw weight of 185 pounds presumably has some amount of let off to make it a little bit easier. So we should be at least in the ballpark of what Bungie has given me over the past decade plus, if not easier to cock with a rope than that. 7.4 pounds, axle axle 13.25. So this is a little wider than some of the other crossbows we've seen, but it's still not real wide. When we talk in terms of width, Bungie at 36 inches wide, Bungie Jr. at 25 inches wide. Here we're talking 13, probably on the outside of those cams, we're talking 16 inches wide at the most, at the most, 15, 16 inches wide probably. That's totally in the ballpark. I'm not looking for the world's narrowest crossbow. I just don't want to be as wide as I've been, right? So that, that's all. And width of a crossbow is something I will discuss in an upcoming video when we look at Excalibur, because we are going to look at Excalibur. We are going to do that. I intend to go through all of these manufacturers. I have hit the high points of the ones that are being recommended the most, just because I'm kind of tired of getting the comments over and over about, when are you going to look at this one? And I just want you to know they're all coming. So they're coming, okay? I am going to look at them. I am very interested in these things, and I do want to look at them more thoroughly. So that's an interesting picture. I don't know if we can blow that up, but we do see a couple interesting things. I'll go through this. We have a traditional stirrup on the front end of this. That's interesting. That traditional stirrup has a little bit of tread built into the stirrup, so you get your foot in there. It's not going to slide around. Looks to me to be a very good design. And the broadhead is well protected. I like that. I don't recognize that broadhead. It looks like a fixed blade or some kind of hybrid or something like that. Uh, but I won't hold that against Darton. <laughs> uh, it's tucked in there nice. I do like that. It's very well protected to reduce vibration. Those are the dual string suppressors, it looks like. That's what we see listed here. The scope, I have no knowledge whatsoever of what their optics are like. This one... 
The string angle, I've commented on that in previous videos here most recently. That string angle doesn't look too steep to me. And I also appreciate the way this web page is holding the pictures so that I can do this video. It's very nice of them to do that. And of course, we have the Bullpup stock design. The Toxin 150 is at 1,079. The Toxin 135 is at 919. And the Toxin 100 is at 649. Now, I'm looking at these and... We're going to look at the difference. Here we see the 135. That is not a style that I am interested in for the crossbow that I'm going to buy. This is a time-tested and common design. There's no question about that. But that is not a design that I'm probably looking at. That is an older design, right? That's the traditional compound crossbow design. And it's wider. As you can see, they've managed to put the quiver on there width-wise without making the crossbow too much wider. That is not really a design I'm interested in. That's more akin to what you've seen in the past. I'm more attracted for some reason, okay? And maybe it's just visually. But this is a more modern design. I like this design over this design. That's just me. Any crossbow out there, if it's getting the job done for you, that's totally okay. I'm just saying when I'm looking at crossbows, I am looking at this more modern design. I also, this one has the scope just like levitating out there in space. And I commented on that with a Raven design. This doesn't look good to me. I lower my crossbow in and out of the tree stand most of the time with a rope. Uh, and I'm guilty of climbing into the tree stand with it holding it in my hand sometimes too. But remember, I don't carry a sling, so I'm not wearing the crossbow in there. I have the backpack on my back, and that goes up with me in the ladder. But I try to, and I encourage Genevieve to, and require Genevieve to, lift the crossbow up and down out of the tree stand with a rope. This thing, that just seems like it's going to get bent, or, uh, man, I just don't, I don't really like that. But if they're having good success with it, so be it. Uh, hopefully these other ones don't have that design issued. Let's go real quick, though, back here on store. Compound bows. Let's look what else they offer, just to, out of curiosity. Now, here's the high-grade scope, and here is the other scope. Okay. And then we have the 4x32 scope. Very nice, very nice. The Toxin Easy Draw Winch for $79.97. Two comments on that. First of all, $79.97 for a cocking system, that's a pretty good deal, assuming it is a good cocking system. $79.99. When I went and bought one for the Excalibur for Genevieve's crossbow, that came with a C2 crank. I went out and purchased the Charger EXT for it, which is, she can't use the C2. That, that one doesn't provide, it's too, still too, hard to cock. With the Charger EXT, she can cock that crossbow okay. So that's not a problem, right? That was like $230. I mean, it was way expensive compared to this. I mean, you can buy a crossbow for $230. And that was just a crank. So from a local shop, granted. But Toxin Easy Draw Winch, this thing, $79. Now that's a price point that I appreciate and like. And if we look at it there, it looks like the same design as what I'm familiar with with these. However, they got the handle on the left-hand side. So, okay. It's for right and left-handed use. Very nice. It easily attaches to and detaches to the crossbow. Very nice. It's essentially a crank system. I get that. But they call it a winch. And wow, if we're at the point where crossbows require winches, that's like a different discussion. <laughs> it's all winch. But that's neat. Now, what else we got for anything else here? We have an XT kit. Ooh, look at that for 56 bucks. Now this, are you looking to put XT adjustability on your Toxin SS crossbow? Now you can, the XT kit includes Darton's well-known finger guard mill spec picatinny rail and folding grip. I think I'm in love. <laughs> that is a neat setup. The ability to fold that up and it looks like you can adjust it with an Allen wrench. I am sure that's what that is. You can adjust that foregrip with an Allen wrench and move it forward. So I could place that further up on the picatinny rail or move it back. 
before I assemble it on the crossbow, before I attach it to the crossbow. Now this adds finger guards. I don't think this is gonna go on the crossbows that we just looked at, but it's very interesting that this would fold up. You'd have your more traditional way of holding the crossbow, but you can always fold that down and have your hand up and down on the front end the way I have talked about I would like to, the ability to do. And then we have executioner crossbow arrows. Are those? Yeah, they are, they're the executioners. Oh, there's Black Eagle. Okay, they're a high-end crossbow arrow. Well, thank you, Darton, for including those. That's fantastic. Uh, or at least offering those. They have an easy draw cocking rope. Now, the crank requires a winch, but you can easy draw with a cocking rope. For $22.97, their accessories are not overly priced. They're not priced real high. That's nice. I like this. A crossbow side mount, quiver, bracket, and then we have a quiver, a BQ4 arrow quiver. A four arrow quiver, that looks like it was made by the folks who made gear ed archery. <laughs> doesn't it, you know, doesn't it really, like web design? <laughs> kind of interesting. Uh, but a four arrow quiver, nice to see. I like to have four arrow quivers. A lot that I'm seeing here looks good, interesting to me, okay? It looks like stuff that I would be very interested in and stuff that would complement my hunting style. It looks consistent with the way that I want to carry a crossbow in the woods. Now, when we go to the Realtree Arrow Momentum Calculator, and we have 425 feet per second, and we have a 400 grain arrow. But, but, for my purposes, I'm gonna up that 400 grain arrow to 450 grains, because I've chosen my broadhead going forward. So I am very hopeful that whatever crossbow I end up with shoots and that broadhead okay and likes that broadhead because I like that broadhead and Genevieve more importantly likes that broadhead. It is the Rage Crossbow Tripan 150 grain broadhead. Steel, nice design. I'll do another video on that down the road. Did some videos on it last summer during Crossbow Appreciation Month. But that's a the broadhead we like. We've had good results with it and I don't see any reason to change, right? So the new crossbow that I get, I'm hoping to use that with a new crossbow. I'm assuming I can get any crossbow in the market to shoot that accurately, but maybe I shouldn't make that assumption. So the arrow weight, we're going to look at that. I'm going to click in here and we're going to type in 425 for the, no, we're going to type in 450. This is what's known as garbage in, garbage out. If I don't put in the right numbers, we're not getting the right answers. So we'll go back here and we'll change that to 450. And I don't need to enter to win. We're going to get rid of that. But we've got 450 arrow weight and we've got an arrow speed, a blazing arrow speed, mind you, of 425. No, won't be the blazing fast 425 feet per second. Instead, we can expect to lose probably around 15 feet per second by adding that 50 grains to the front of the arrow. So I'm going to change that to a mere 410 feet per second from the 425 because we're subtracting 15 feet per second from the 425 that the manufacturer is getting with a 400 grain arrow. We're subtracting out 15 feet per second, dropping us down into the neighborhood of 410 feet per second. So this will be interesting. So we'll see what we got. So this will be more accurate. So we're going to hit generate kinetic energy and momentum and our 450 grain arrow combo with the broadhead at 410 feet per second. Mooses, oh, does it, and does it ever. Look at that, look at those numbers. Now, here's an interesting observation. We have 167.94 foot-pounds of energy, less kinetic energy than we've seen. We've seen the 170s out of some of the crossbows that we're testing here and that we're running through this little simple but fun. Fun is a big part of this, right? But 167 is more than enough to open your broadhead, right? 167 foot-pounds of kinetic energy hitting the side of a deer is enough to let that deer know that it has, in fact, been hit with a crossbow arrow. <laughs> okay, it's going to be enough. But look at the momentum. We are at 0.819. I can tell you, in my opinion, anytime you're over 0.8 for slugs, for momentum, you're doing pretty good, okay? You really don't have an awful lot to worry about. There are other factors. Broadhead choice, broadhead selection is a big factor in penetration, as is momentum. So it's not just momentum. I'll do other videos about that, too. And I've done videos in the past, and everybody else is doing videos on that stuff, too, right? It's nothing new. But nonetheless, that 0.819 is significant. It is not a number to be laughed at. 
It's going to be enough to get the arrow there. And it's going to, I should look at, and probably will look at, the trajectory of these things, because that's a factor too. That's a little bit more in depth than what I want to do in these videos. But that's something that as we narrow down our search and look at specific ones, narrow this down to three or four models, now maybe we've got to start talking about that, right? We've got to look at the flatness of the trajectory with our intended arrow rig on a crossbow by crossbow basis. So I might have to add that. For right now, that's beyond what I want to get into in this video. I will say that these numbers are very impressive. And I also will say that when I see this crossbow, dart and archery, having known absolutely nothing about them until I just went to this webpage, right? Know nothing about them other than I was kind of impressed by a one video that I saw, right? What does that even mean? Nonetheless, I see this. And I think this is a possible. This is at least something that I should see if it's available locally so I can go test one, so I can go try one out. I'm getting the impression that we're beyond the three or four that I was looking at. Maybe we got five, maybe even six different crossbows I got to go look at. Every time I look at one, with few exceptions, I, I don't cross them off the list. It's like they, they end up on the list, right? So this is a pretty impressive little crossbow. Interesting. There's a lot more to it, but from what I've seen here, I really like the last thing I want to do, let's look at this website. I'm going to start doing in these videos. Let's look at these numbers in comparison to the other brands and models that we got, right? All of them moose out of the box. That's awesome. But some moose out of the box a little bit better than others now, don't they? So let's also sort of look at that and list them here and sort of share them here and evaluate them here sort of on a ranking or a list of how they fall into the mix. That'll be interesting. So we kind of know where they are out of the box. And keep in mind, those numbers change depending on your broadhead, arrow selection, that sort of thing. Those numbers will go up and down and those crossbows will move up and down that list based on changes in your equipment, obviously. Nonetheless, Dart and Archery, thank you very much for your very user-friendly website. I'd like to see a few more pictures. That would have been nice. But that's something I can get down the road. Thank you very much, Darton. Thank you for watching. I hope you got something out of this video. And until next time, all hail Bungie. Bungie.